Rockingham County government presents You've Got Grit. You've Got Grit, Mark Bishopric. You've Got Grit. True grit is making a decision and standing by it, doing what must be done. No moral man can have peace of mind if he leaves undone what he knows he should have done by John Wayne. You've Got Grit. We'd like to introduce to you Mark Bishopric. Mark, tell us, who are you? Well, good, good morning, Mabel. Uh, I grew up here in the Rockingham Carrot County area, was born in Leesville, and grew up in the Spray area, uh, attended the local elementary, junior high and high school, and graduated um, there in 1973 and went to college and then worked in Atlanta and New York and Charlotte area and then moved back here to work with a local textile firm in 1979. So your growing up days in Rockingham County, what was it like? Well, we were, we were very fortunate here uh, during my childhood and high school time frame that that there were lots of job opportunities for folks and a lot of manufacturing jobs and a lot of farming jobs that were uh, we were probably more agricultural jobs at that, at that point in time in the 50s and 60s early 70s than, than they are now in terms of full-time farmers. Uh, but a lot of folks did part-time farming while they worked in manufacturing. So it was a uh, very active economy locally in terms of workforce. And lots of change going on with the schools. Uh, Rockingham County Community College was formed in the, during the 60s. And so there was a, a, a lot of change and a lot of dynamics going on in that time frame uh, through the early early 70s uh, when I left town in 1973. How do you think Rockingham County helped to develop Mark Bishopric? Well, I think that like a lot of a lot of folks that that grew up at that point in time, we all were able. A lot of folks were able to get summer employment. Work, uh, work summer jobs to to save some money and make some money, and and so I think that learning you know, for to to work regular jobs um, uh, at as soon as you were 16, 17, most folks worked in the summers um, when they were in high school doing something. As far as your career is concerned, what directed you toward that particular area? Well, uh, my career has had many phases. I uh, was in, in high school. I took normal curriculum uh, for co what they would consider college prep uh, curriculum at that point in time. Took some uh, bookkeeping courses and found those to be quite interesting. And so when I went to college, um, one of the areas of interest I, I, I checked out was uh, accounting. Uh, my, my major was in economics, accounting, and uh, management sciences. And uh, went to work for a CPA firm in Atlanta, Georgia. And you did traveling. You mentioned New York. Well, I, wor I was in Atlanta for a couple of years mm -hmm. and then uh, changed, uh, got out of public accounting, got into industry and, and worked in, lived in New York in the late 70s, early 80s after leaving Atlanta and coming back to this area. And um, we, we had customers all over the East Coast, and so I spent a lot of time with uh, sales and 
working in, in the New York, New England area, uh, Pennsylvania area. But what attracted you back to Rockingham County? Well, we, I had a, a just a, an opportunity to for work, um, like a lot of folks that moved to Rockingham County from other places. Um, one of the driving reasons was uh, employment and uh, opportunity for for work. Also, enjoying the outdoors. Um, probably got a little tired of of living in the city. Uh, Atlanta was not as big a city then as it is now, but it was pretty big. And then New York was a nice place when you were 25, but did you really want to stay there? And and with the uh, all the challenges, day just day to day challenges to do the thing types of things outdoor things that i enjoyed doing in my non-working time and that leads to my next question tell us about three rivers outfitters and how you got involved with that and why that's so important to your life since you love the outdoors well as we as industry uh fell upon hard times here in rockingham county uh, i was in my early 50s, I had some local opportunities uh, to uh, continue to, to earn a living here. And a group of us uh, formed Three Words Out Outfitters in 2004 as a, as a part time uh, weekend sort of business and keep us out of trouble, I guess, on the weekends. And so we have been in business since 2004 and and uh, we continue to to operate on a primarily a weekend basis but but also during the week when when we can schedule customers for for during the week work as we can work that out with our own job schedule why do you think the, the rivers are so important to this area well the rivers have always been important to this to Rockingham County. That's why Rockingham County was settled in the 1790s, uh, earlier than a lot of places, even some say in, say in Greensboro and those areas where they didn't have rivers, they, they had uh, didn't have the transportation that that the rivers afforded Rockingham County. It was, it was much more efficient to move boats upstream. Um, once the navigational aids were, were, were constructed, starting in the late 1700s on the Roanoke River and then the dam, uh, Damble was formed um, and developed, industry grew there, and then that moved on up here into Rockingham County. And then all the way, there was navigation all the way above Mat uh, Madison on, on the dam. And that's that's what started the industrial develop. That's that's why Leakesville was here. Uh, that's why why spray spray was formed in 1813, not as an entity, but but the business district there when when the Barnett Canal was built in 1813 for grist mill there, and then the it, Leakesville was a river port, starting in the 1790s, 17 late 1790s and there was a, uh, a landing, a bateau landing there. And then there were, in the early 1800s, uh, there was a, the next bateau port was upstream at, at Madison. And that was kind of the headwater, primary headwaters. We did navigate somewhere up river above there, but it, it was the last community that was built around the river and the river port. So the rivers have always been critical uh, for, for transportation, for water power. The, the canal that was built in 1813 with the grist mill was built there because it could produce water power there for the, for the mill to operate the mill and then that canal became a hydroelectric canal in the 1880s and so 
that's that's why the industry was here well, it was a because of transportation of goods and b because there was water power and that's the same story throughout all the communities in the southeast at the whether you're at the uh, in the first zone of, of that fall line down around, around Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Um, it runs kind of along where I-95 is. They, they were mills in that area, but if you go through Rockingham County, you'll probably find 15, 20 different mill sites where people had community mills. They were built on creeks and small streams and rivers. Um, obviously the one on the Smith River with the Barnett Canal was probably a little larger operation than the local grist mill that might have been on Troublesome Creek, so here in, um, in the Reedsville area. So there, there were, and, and there were some on the Hall River, certainly some up on the Mayo River, um, the Sagio Mill, Shepherd's Mill, um, over as you go outside of uh, Rockingham County over to Stokes County. There, there were all kinds of mills all over this this region on, on all types of waterways. We can tell that you love the river. What is it about the river that really just lets you know well, this it, is me? As as you have the opportunity to to take a day or half a day or an hour. Out on the river, you you can go out there and enjoy nature, enjoy the quietness, and every time you go on the same section of river, even if you, you every day it's a different, it looks different, it's a different water level, different clarity of the water. You see different animals, different other creatures uh, in the river, on the river, around the river, whether it's a, a hawk or an eagle or an osprey or a heron or, a, or an otter. And so those are all things that you might encounter if you just get out there and paddle for an hour. Uh, locally whether it's on the smith or the dan uh, the north mayo the south mayo or or the mayo uh, it's it's an opportunity to ex experience and enjoy the, the quietness and the solitude of, of just quiet not a lot of quiet in today's world. So with the pandemic and the epidemics that we're dealing with now, the rivers can be a, a real sense of solitude. They, they, can, they can be a calming place. Mm -hmm. And obviously in, in our business, we've had to change how we do things, mm -hmm. uh, our activity. Um, had lots of interest in business this year. Uh, we can't, we have not been able to accommodate quite a few folks uh, simply because with the restrictions, we can't fill the bus, we can't do all of those things in terms of um, running a trip. Normally our trips were, we'd let as many as 14 people on a particular trip with us, because um, that's, we have a small bus and holds 14 people and so, it was not uncommon on weekends for us to have a group going out that had 14 people. And this year, we self-limited that uh, in order to comply with with uh, social distancing. We, we didn't want 14 people in the shop. We only ran one vehicle because we didn't want more than that number of people, eight or nine people in the shop at any given time. We didn't want two bus loads or two, a bus and a van load of people all milling around, uh, we, we just felt that uh, for everybody's benefit that to, to limit the number of folks that were likely to be in our 
place of business uh, to a, to a small to a relatively small number, six or eight. Occasionally, we might we when we had a family group that might come in with like ten people, we and they drove to our place in a van together. Didn't see much reason to limit that kind of trip because they were already. I mean, they right over there in the same car. My bus was going to be more social distancing than, than their car, but generally speaking, uh, most of our trips, two people, three people, four people, that's kind of the type of trips that we do most of. And it's, that's what, how people can achieve the quietness out there on the river. Our, our business is different than some of the other local outfitter type businesses and that, that we're, we run 25 different trips on the Smith Dan and the Mayo and on a given day unless there's an extremely high border situation or a regional border event in terms of rainfall usually we can find somewhere on those three rivers out of those 25 different trips that people can find a place to have a quiet, comfortable paddle on a given day without um, without running into a lot of other folks while they're out there. Why do you still love Rockingham County? Well, Rockingham County is has faced lots of challenges. Uh, back in the 90s, it was one of the largest percentage of manufacturing employment counties in, in North Carolina. And that, with the change in the, the furniture business, the textile business, the tobacco business, uh, obviously that offered some significant challenges to the county overall as those industries suffered decline uh, due to, primarily due to, uh, less expensive imports uh, from from all over the globe as as people chose to buy their their goods that were produced somewhere other than locally or regionally or within the US and so those challenges were felt throughout the county by and throughout the region. Our county is no exception. Uh, but I believe that there were opportunities here uh, to live and work in a, in, a, in a positive environment. And it was different than what it was in the 70s and 80s, or different than what it's been since the late 1800s because of the prevailing industry that had been so strong in the county for so long, including the agricultural. Because the tobacco industry was not just the, the processing tobacco industry, you also had the large amount of tobacco that was grown by the area farmers and, and went to market or warehousing. You know, so that's all of those industrial changes that came about really changed the way of life for lots of folks um, throughout the county, throughout the region. But there's always opportunities as long as you're willing to turn the, turn the leaf over or look at the other side of the, of the map because you, it, every change creates opportunities if you're willing to do something different do, and approach things differently than how you approached 10, 12 years ago. Change. A person who's gone through change, and as you could tell by listening to him, he certainly has grit. He knows a lot about Rockingham County and a lot about the history, the industries, and the beauty that Rockingham County has to offer. Mark Bishopry, you've got grit. 
And I bet many of you know a Rockingham County citizen you describe by saying, you've got grit. Please email a paragraph describing a Rockingham County citizen you think Spectrum 1304 and Rockingham County government should interview for You've Got Grit. Simply email your paragraph to mscott at co.rockingham.nc.us. That's mscott at co.rockingham.nc.us. Thanks for You've Got Grit presented by Rockingham County Government.